I believe Sir Kristen has bloodied that white cloak of his with your bride's maidenhead. I'll keep your voice down. Perhaps that is something we might remedy, Fair Prince. Perhaps it is. This is a good thing. She knows your secret. And now you know hers. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Fayfire, and today we're doing another hot take on Hot D. Today's Hot D will be longer and hotter. And today we're talking about Sir Joffrey Lonmouth, the Knight of Kisses and lover of the new King Consort. All right, enough of that. <laughs> Things did not end well for Joffrey, whose head got smashed to a pulp like a ripe orange out of Dorne. There were actually some really deep mythological ties into this fight, and you know that's what I'm here to shine light on, so join me today to take a deeper look at the fight scene from episode five and how it connects to some ancient Arthurian legends. Sir Joffrey made some sly comments to Sir Criston, who'd been pouting in the corner all night while his lady love was married off. The night of kiss your ass goodbye caught him at the wrong time. Kristen lost it and beat Joffrey's head in, killing him with his bare hands, all while in the midst of Rhaenyra and Laenor's wedding. The scene turned to chaos around them, and afterwards, Kristen goes to the godswood to end his life for his crimes, but Queen Alicent stops him just in time. Laenor is heartbroken over the death of his lover, and Rhaenyra is guilt-stricken for Kristen's acts, which she feels responsible for. Okay, so you know I've talked many times about Kristen being Lancelot, and I'll say it again. How, might you ask? Well, in more ways than just falling in love with the princess. Let me paint this picture for you. In Arthurian legend, Lancelot comes from France and was actually a later addition into the stories about King Arthur. Probably the oldest text about King Arthur is called The History of the High Kings of Britain and was written by a Welsh man called Joffrey of Monmouth in the early 1100s. This book of Welsh mythology goes all the way back to Brutus of Troy, who founded Britain and slayed the giants who inhabited the land. There are tales through the reign of King Arthur, and this is some of the oldest source material found about him. We also find stories of otherworldly goddesses, and the women are portrayed here as powerful queens. The history of Britain is scarce, so a lot of it is looked at through a mythological lens, but what is fascinating is this next part. Another man was writing Arthurian legends around this time as well, out of France. He was called Chrétien de Troyes, and this man is responsible for the legends of Lancelot. In Arthurian lore, it is well known that Lancelot falls in love with Queen Guinevere, the wife of King Arthur. They have an affair, and they're eventually caught by some fellow knights, including Gawain and his brothers, who are Arthur's cousins. Lancelot goes into berserker mode and kills the youngest brother, Gaheris, who idolized Lancelot. Out of grief and sorrow, Lancelot goes into exile where he loses his mind and becomes a violent, wandering warrior in search of the Grail. Chrétien's works were not popularized until the 1300s with the Vulgate Cycle, also known as the Lancelot Grail Cycle. This is a series of tales of the Knights of King Arthur's court seeking the Holy Grail. This is where the legends of King Arthur shift from Welsh mythology with powerful queens and goddesses to a more Christian, male-dominated form where the women and even queens become damsels in distress and the otherworldly goddesses become evil witches. We can already see so many connections with Lancelot in Kristen Cole. What I love about this connection is that, up until this point, Kristen has honored Rhaenyra as a dragon-riding princess. Rhaenyra had many animal blessings back in episode 3 where she killed the boar and encountered the white stag, and Kristen witnessed it all. Check out my video below for more details on all the mythology in that episode, including the fact that Rhaenyra has a huge connection to the otherworld goddess Rhiannon. Kristen is forced to switch sides. Much like Lancelot, who exiled himself for falling in love with Guinevere, which then evolved into a Christianized version of the Grail Quest, which originates in Welsh mythology, written by Joffrey of Monmouth. Criston exiles himself from Rhaenyra's service through his confession to Queen Alicent, which leads to him losing control and beating Joffrey of Lonmouth to death, which is a parallel to Lancelot going berserker and killing Gaheris. Furthermore, the original Welsh legends contain stories of animal blessings and otherworldly goddesses like Rhaenyra herself, but this is tainted by Lancelot infiltrating the stories and shifting them to the Christianized versions of the tales where the women are weakened and no longer accepted as leaders over men. 
Lancelot fought his way into the Arthurian world and crushed the old Welsh legends with the muscle of the church, much like Criston fought his way into the Kingsguard, then crushed the old ways, the Valyrian ways, by smiting the new king's lover to injure Rhaenyra, and then was pardoned by Alicent, who is trying to get her own son onto the throne. Do you see what I'm getting at here? With how episode three played out, we know that Ryan Condal and Miguel Sapochnik and George R.R. Martin himself are definitely implanting these old legends and these huge Easter eggs in here for those of us who notice them. But through scenes like this, where the name connections are really clear, or scenes with the boar and the stag and many other mythological connections, we are invited even deeper into this story. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below. And if you're a fan of Arthurian legends, check out some of my other videos on the channel. I talk a lot about King Arthur here. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Sir Geoffrey Longliffe. With the Knight of Kisses, they call me though. I don't know why. I'm on watch. What's your business? You don't know me, Sir Kristen. No, but we are both deeply invested in this union.